cactus out there. And even all the fences were made with cactus, so a goat couldn't even get through. And uh, I'd land there on that little sand bed on the bend of the river, and just up there was a waterfall. It was pretty. It was not high, but high as this ceiling here, just enough to just be picturesque. And I, so, But I couldn't take off of the load. And Mari would uh, get all kind of toys and and. Uh, goodies and candies and red apples, what the children like. I saw how starving they was. They had, they had nothing. I mean, they were just poverty. And I'd bring that airplane down, loaded with these goodies and these candies and little toys, and give it to those children. And I noticed every week there was more and more children. They was hearing about that American Santa Claus coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that might have been my undoing. <laughs> so I remember I did 12 loads in a row. And uh on that 13, I had that little thing going off in the ding of your stomach. Ding, 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 don't do it, don't do it. And I landed, and so I, I uh, the children were there by, by the gobs. So I landed about halfway down the strip, and I went by the starving donkeys and up the road to the place. And I asked this Joaquin, do you have the Federalists paid off? Oh, yes, they're completely paid off. So I spent the night in a hammock in this barn-like structure and the donkeys braying and the roosters crowing. And <laughs> the next morning, it, it, just at daylight, just before daylight, they'd wake me up and we'd walk down to my airplane, which was a quarter of a mile, I reckon. And uh, I'd brush my teeth in that river and, and they had a young fella, uh, Pedro, that he didn't probably weigh 120 pounds, and he'd get in the plane with me. We'd, we'd fuel up the night before I'd take fuel with me. And... Uh, then he would show me where they had a roadblock. <clears throat> so he'd take off, and I'd, I'd take off with that empty airplane, and I'd go 20, 30 miles or maybe, and they would block a road. They had a two-ton truck, and they'd come out with all the guns on it, and they'd block the road, and then you'd see about a mile up there, another big truck would come across and block it, and the road would be clear. And I'd land between them, and they'd come up with the truck and put the marijuana in the airplane, and I'd shake hands with all of them. <laughs> and I'd get in the truck and take off over the other one. Okay, so you were landed in the highway. I landed in the highways because right. that was the only place down there that was on a runway long enough to take off with a load like that. Yeah. We didn't have any place that you could take off, so I, I'd always on the highway. And sometimes they wouldn't be six inches from the wheels on that side to the, to the little berm, so I had to keep it right dead center. And uh, so that morning when we got in the plane, to, I was going to taxi back to the end to start. Bow! I thought a wheel blew out. They kind of stick out there. And I'm looking, and Pedro's yelling, Policia, Policia, Roger, Policia. And it dawned on me, uh-oh. No, I don't want none of this. <laughs> so I just pushed it to the firewall, and I only had a full 500 feet in front of me. And I went tearing off down that dusty, sandy place. And uh, when I got to the end of it, I pulled up real strong and just hoping it would fly off. I had to. And it took off, and it was just hanging on a stall on its nose. And they riddled that airplane with machine guns. I mean, there was 80 bullet holes in there. One took the top of my head, creased it, took my kneecap off, took the end of my toe off. Oh, you got shot. I got shot three times. Three times. Yeah, and uh, Pedro, I didn't see it at the time, I tell you. But anyway, uh, the airspeed indicator just went away. That's what I was looking at to see where I was. And the instrument I was watching at the time, it just disappeared. And the bullets went up above me over my head. They were just all over. I don't know how I didn't die. And they shredded up the top, and the wings are high, and the gasoline from that left wing was just pouring in on me like you was pouring it out of a bucket. It was all over me. And somehow or another, it scared me so bad until time almost stopped. Things turned yellow. The only time in my life I was... That's crisis. I thought I was fixing to burst into flames any second. Yeah. Those bullets was hitting so hard. <laughs> it was like a hailstorm. And it was over just like that. Could you see them down there shooting at I you? I didn't see them, see them shooting them because it was, I went through them. Now, I'm, I'm up at the end, and I looked ahead of me, and the river is maybe 18 inches deep or so. And it looks like it's huge turtles on the river, those rocks had made shapes, you know how diamonds and other stuff make, they are just laying there in that river like that. And I pull that power and I cut the f electricity off so that there wouldn't be any sparks, hopefully, till I could get down there. I knew I was fixing to die. And I hit, bam, I hit hard and the wings came off and then it bounced again. And when it bounced the next time, the whole firewall under 
came under the airplane, and I'm sitting in the middle of the river, and I'm not, I guess, unconscious because Pedro's hit me in the ribs. Come on, Roger, come on, Roger. <laughs> well, I undid my seatbelt and stepped out. And now there's four Federalists running down the runway, and they're quite a ways from me, and they're still shooting. They hit the plane twice while we start. Well, it just happened to so that I had that 9 millimeter taped to the top of the radio, so I'd have it in case of crashing in the jungle or whatever. Well, I just reached now. It's just there in the holster <laughs> in the most conspicuous place, and I popped a few black down the runway, <laughs> and they ran, into, they ran into rocks. I didn't see the Federalis no more. <laughs> when the rabbit got the f gun, the farmer, he run. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so we took off down the sand, and I looked, and Pedro's foot had turned. It came under his, it, when the AK-47s came in his ankle and blew it out the other side. It wasn't even bleeding. It was just white. So, oh my goodness gracious, so I, I want to go. He said, no, no, we got to go up the hill. The Federal is to go down here, the easy place. Let's go up. So we went up and got into a path of cactus. There's a big old cactus there everywhere. And there was a donkey. She must have been 30 years old with long hair. And Pedro just runs up to her, Charlotte, Charlotte, and starts petting her. And we jump on the back of that donkey, and we go for several hours, a couple hours, and we come to a place, um, uh, a little a little farm, a white house in a clearing. It's just like where the indigenous people will just make a place for themselves. And the trees was down and it had been burned and a man was plowing there and he had a, uh, he had a cow and a, a little mule. And the, and the thing over the neck was sideways like this and he had a little plow and he was plowing with them trying to make him a living, and uh, Pedro knew him. So then he put us in his house, and his wife and his daughter were in there, and, and he went for help. So uh, we were there all day long, and, and the woman got uh, some cloth and put over our wounds, remember, on my head, and then she poured diesel over all over it. Oh. She thought it, well, it did keep the flies off. So anyhow, we sat there all day long. I mean, just in a straight chair all day long. I guess I was in some kind of shock. And about dark... Were you uh, worried about anything? I wasn't worried. I did You weren't worried about getting well, caught? I, 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 about there was a hunting it. rifle on that wall, and I wanted to go back over there <laughs> and take care of business, tell you the truth. But I must have been out of my mind. Uh, but somebody <laughs> shooting me, I ain't particularly <laughs> in, uh, in favor of them. But uh, so late in the afternoon, a bunch of horses and mules come walking fast up into that yard. <laughs> Might have been 20 of them. There was help come. And there was a young man there, he spoke English, Dr. Benjamin Soso. He was a Red Cross doctor from 20, 30 miles away. And he came in there and boy, he, he gave us tetanus shots and gave me a big shot of morphine and same thing for Pedro and that, that these things up right quick. And uh, he worked as a, there's a slug in the, my foot back in the ankle bone. He, he looked for that for a while. I think he did more damage looking than the slug did. But uh, he says, you got to get to, you got to get to hospital. And Pedro, you'll die if you don't get to hospital quick. And he said, they uh, got the roads blocked all the way north. They're looking for an American pilot that they think's dead. There was so much blood, blood in that airplane. So he said, you got to go south. He knew you were a pilot. Yeah, he knew I was. Of course, he, he come for the help. He got the story. So, and he said, it's all over. He said, so they, there's roadblocks everywhere. So there's three, there's a platoon of soldiers in here looking for you. So we, I got on a, I think a horse or a mule, I don't know, and I, we rode a long way. And we came to a road, a, a dirt road, and there was a big 10-wheeler truck and it was loaded full of corn, corn in the shuck. And they dug holes on one side for me in that corn, I got down in it. And they, on the other side, they dug one for Pedro. And these people sitting all over the truck and there's rapids and their big sombreros. And, uh, that truck, that, ro that, that ro road was rough. And every time that truck would roll, that corn would roll over my face and they'd dig me back out. <laughs> we must have rode 20 miles and we came to the highway and we run through three roadblocks. Soldiers all over it, nobody said a word. So we came to the road and they took me in a house and uh, stripped me off and got me some, I remember the pan had a little chip in it. I must have changed the water 20 times to get the blood and the crud off of me from all day and all that stuff. And finally it got clean. They put, got me some clothes and put on me. And uh, so they needed a, a, a taxi to take me to Guadalajara. I don't know how much, how long it is, but it took all night. So the long way. 
So they had to go to Mazatlan to find a taxi. And so finally they had to find, hard to find one that would go that far with something like this. So finally they come up with a brand new car. And they made a bed in the back seat for me and laid me up there. And that doctor gave me, a, they gave me those pills. And I was, I was buzzing. So uh, the, the man was a dwarf. What kind of pills? What do they give oh, you? I guess something with morphine or something to keep, something the, uh, to keep take the, the pain down. It was, yeah. I was shot. I was I was hurting, <laughs> and one was in in the, in the middle of my foot, was lodged in there. It was it was rough. it was rough, right in right in the joint of the ankle bone. So uh, I uh, I got in the back seat and I lay down in there, and he started off to Guadalajara, and he was a small man, dwarf, and he talked all night. And I'd like to tell you what he said. I said, uh, I said, do you have a family? He said, oh, I have a lovely family. Let me tell you about my beautiful wife, Dora, and how I got her. He said, I was in the village, and you know, look at me. No girl would even look at me. But I had my eye on this girl across the way. And one day, she's playing the flute in the back of the band, and she comes by, and I go out, and I grab her, and I pull her in the gate, and my mother helps me pull her in the house. And I tell her I love her. But she sat straight in that chair all night and won't even look at us. I said, Senor, the next morning, what could I do? I have to send her home. So I sent her home, and I follow her at a distance. And she knocks on her father's door, her door, and her father, get away from here, you prostitute. You spent the night with some man. You no daughter of mine. Get away from that door. So Dora left with her hair, head hanging low. And I went up and said, Dora, let's go talk to the Padre. And Senor, that's how I got my beautiful wife, Dora. He said, and you won't believe it. But one year later, we have a beautiful boy. And I was di driving a new Ford. So we named him Ford. <laughs> and Senor, the next year, we have another boy. And that year, I just bought me a new Dodge, so we named him Dodge. <laughs> and, senor, I know you're not going to believe it, but the third year, we had another boy, and I had just bought a new Chevrolet. And that priest wouldn't name him Chevrolet. I had to teach that son of a bitch to drive before he'd name him Chevrolet. <laughs> and that's how I got my three boys, Ford, Dodge, and Chevrolet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So you see some of the tales I've had, and they're all true. Yeah. <laughs> Just unbelievable. Hey, everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.